Great. Hi, everyone. My name is Leah. Um, I work at a company called Stratcom. We're a progressive uh, campaigns and fundraising uh, consultancy. Um, and when Eli first asked me to do this session on text messaging at this nonprofit tech trend for 2018, um, you know, I was obviously excited to come and meet the Net Square community. Um, but then I looked at the speakers afterwards and it was like blockchain and VR and text messaging next to it just looked really off. Uh, but I would actually argue that it's one of the powers of uh, SMS as well. Um, it's a relatively unsaturated medium and so it's some super low hanging fruit that you can hang it. They can tap into to reach out to whether it's donors, supporters, or um, people that you want to uh, get into your lists. Well, so, why SMS? Um, so, I think we are way past the point of mobile 1.0 now, but now we're more in uh, similar to web 2.0, mobile 2.0. Um, some stats to just kind of get your uh, brain around this is that more Canadian households have mobile phones and landlines. Um, who has a landline in this room? I'm just curious. You're the last person on the planet. You are the fourth last person in this room. Um, so 85.6 versus 75.5, and these numbers are only going to get higher. Um, and then three out of five Canadians own a smartphone, so that's the highest it's ever been, and that number is growing globally as well. Um, globally, five billion people out of uh, the overall population of 7.5. Um, everyone has a mobile phone. Um, and 75% of millennials would rather text and talk, and yes, I can attest to that. <laughs> um, and so why SMS specifically? So people check their phone uh, around 150 times per day. Um, so I was really shocked when I first saw the stat, but if I actually think about how many times I just mindlessly touch my phone, it is all the time, and 150 is a pretty believable number. Um, every phone these days has an SMS service. I think um, SMS has been uh, trendy or popular or just mainstream for the last 30 years or so. Um, and most people have nearly unlimited texting plans, so you're not really constrained by a lack of data or not having Wi-Fi around. Um, we see that around 98% of text messages are open, so an extremely high open rate. Um, and SMS doesn't use data, so if you're trying to reach out to supporters or um, voters or whoever you're trying to reach out to, and they're not located within cities, SMS is a really good way to, a more low barrier way to reach out to everyone, because uh, it accommodates regions with weaker broadband connectivity. Um, and SMS, I, again, generally is still a surprisingly unsaturated medium, making a pretty low hanging fruit to tackle. <coughs> um, and so when you look at your typical, let's say like, voter contact toolkit, so how you reach out to voters, um, or if you look at your typical um, marketing or donor development uh, funnel. Um, there's some door-to-door -door canvassing around, there's also some uh, volunteer or paid phone calls, um, there's uh, door knocking, um, mainstreaming, whatever it is, email campaigns, but we see that around 129 times um, more reach is found with SMS than door-to-door -door canvassing, um, 77 times more reach for volunteer cold calling of mobile phones, and also generally around 40 times or so more effective at driving actions and email campaigns. And so something like SMS can sit really well in the middle of efficiency, scalability, while still making it very authentic and personal at the same time. Um, so I thought I'd share a couple of stories with you, um, a story and a more practical example of how an SMS campaign can work within various organizations. Um, so Jagmeet Singh, uh, or Jagmeet Singh, he uh, also used Hustle during a product called Hustle, which is a peer-to-peer uh, -peer text messaging platform. Um, so he used that pretty extensively during his election campaign. Um, and I think now in this room we all know who Jagmeet is, and um, he's like basically everywhere in the papers, everywhere on social media. But when he first started his leadership launch, he wasn't that big of a politician all across Canada. And with him being in Toronto and being an Ontario-based politician, um, they had to think of some ways to reach all across the country in a scalable but very personal way as well. Um, so, introducing to the picture, we have uh, Nadia, who is a digital director at um, Jagmeet Singh's campaign. I feel like some of you in this room have probably worked with him. Um, but my colleague Natasha um, helped run this campaign from C Street. Uh, and as a digital director of the Jagmeet Singh campaign, so thinking about all those issues like nationwide reach um, and finding new supporters as well, um, you have to think of a more personable but very scalable way to reach out to all these new people. Um, so Nader knew that he needed a tool that would help him reach thousands without making them feel like they were just another name on the list. Um, so he used something like texting. Um, so this is an example of what a texting campaign could look like. 
Um, so very similar to email bridges, you can put in people's first names or different writings that they're part of, uh, or maybe a campaign event that they joined you at. You can reference all of these things within uh, these lists. Um, and the merge fields that you can create within the text and campaigns. Uh, but Nader and his team use Hostel to recruit volunteers, to bring supporters out to events, um, sell memberships, and get out the vote as well. Um, and here's a little quote from him. He said, it's super fast, and they're having real conversations all across Canada. And it's very intuitive and easy to use, because mostly everyone knows how to text. Um, and what happened with this is Hustle was one of the um, many exciting new tools that the Jagmeet Singh campaign used. Um, so more than, it was a very uh, crowded field that he won against in that leadership contest, but he won with over 50% of the vote, which is incredible. Um, and then on a more practical note, like how we could make, uh, execute this day to day. Um, so we have the uh, BCSVC as an example, who also use text messaging. Um, super cute, I know. Um, and so they have an annual flagship fundraising event called Pause for a Cause. Um, so they were in search of a very personalized yet scalable way to um, sign up their previous Pause for a Cause participants to come and join this year's walk as well. Um, and because you know, they're a charity, they obviously want to make their, uh, every, every gift or every dollar that is given to them go as far as possible. Um, so the BCSPCA decided to bring in a texting tool called Hustle um, to text supporters or ask. Um, and I would note here as well, because the BCSBC is a registered charity, and they are able to um, reach out to their supporters without legislative restriction. Um, if you're curious to know more about that, you can chat afterwards as well. Um, and this is an example of some real-time text that, uh, because I was on the BCSBC's uh, list, they were able to message me. Um, so we tested out two different examples of how a text messaging campaign might be able to work best. Um, and in Ask A, we have um, hi Leah, this is Charlie with BCSPCA. It's just a few weeks till Pause for a Cause. Can you join us? The animals love to see you. Let me know and I'll send you a promo code for free registration. And the mandatory emojis. Um, we always actually see that if you add emojis into your text messages, people respond up to 40% more. Um, so highly encourage that. Um, and then we also have Ask B. Yeah, what kind of society are we coming, right? Um, but in Ask B, it says, Hi Leah, this is Charlie with BCSPCA. Just a few weeks till Pause for a Cause. Will you be there? The animals love to see you. Here's a promo code for free registration, and that promo code is given right away, as long as, as well as the link, and of course, the mandatory images. Um, so which one do you think would have performed better in terms of how many donors came through at the end? Um, hands up for A. Hands up for B. Oh, it's split mix. So what ended up happening is that for Ask A, let me know and I'll give you a free code for registration. Um, we saw that 33% responded, of which 81% said yes. And then Ask B, here's a promo code for free registration. Otter, use it here, full link. Um, we saw that 7% responded, so lots are, um, of which 86% yes, said yes. Um, so the hypothesis and conclusion that we uh, drew from this is that getting people to further engage before sharing increased those conversions. So even if it's a little bit more work that you put in in the beginning, and it results in lots more conversations later. Um, so yeah, that's a, that is the end of my presentation. Amazing. On time. <laughs> Thank you. So what you're doing, yeah. is, if we wanted to learn more about all this crazy stuff, how would we do that? 